Alright, so for any of our friends playing along at home, it is Monday, October 4th, all day long. If you didn't turn in 223 and 224 on Friday, I have not graded them yet, but I will today, so please turn those in if you have not. Uh, if you want to know if you did or didn't, check your math binder. If you don't have 223 and 224 anymore, I bet you turned them in. If they're still in your binder, you need to turn them in. How crazy. That is why we're using our math binder to stay organized and keep track of what needs done or what needs turned in. Now it's quarter two. So yeah, anything from after Wednesday of last week is now quarter two. Guys, we should be in the habit of getting out the previous night's homework. So if you have not gotten out last, well, Friday's homework 225, go ahead and pull that out. I'm not. We're going to give you like a week or two. Well, my bet is I'll check your math binders on Outsiders Day, which is going to be next Tuesday. All right, pull out 225. Let's talk about questions you might have. Remember with our shaded rectangles, your rectangle could look the opposite direction if you did the half across the middle and then the fourths vertically. Either way, the amount that's double shaded is 3 eighths. Right? The amount that is double shaded is 3 225, everyone should be looking at. Even if it's not done, I should see 225 out for everyone. Also, making sure that we still have it. If it's not done, do it tonight. Guys, 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 I can't believe this. This is totally my fault. Guys, we had a typo. And if you didn't go look in the book, we probably didn't notice that we had a typo. 34 is not what it meant to say. It meant to say three fourths. So if you look at 90, I think it's just 90, right? Three fourths is what that problem meant to say. So, if you drew 34, my apologies. Like, always feel free to come ask me questions or, like, double check with the book. I need to go change that in my Google Docs. Like, so, guys, if you see something that you're like, I don't know if this is what he meant to say, it's probably meant to be a fraction. And when I copied things over to the homework, it probably got goofy. Like, it was probably an error, typo, mistake. Whatever you want to say. It was a copy-paste issue. So, if you had 90 wrong, that's totally okay, because that's my fault. I'm going to go change my document right now. So, guys, this is what your homework looked like, right? It said 34. It meant to be 3 fourths. So there should have been a slash in there. Uh, if you worked with 34, though, what's half of 34? 17. So if you had 17 as your answer, that's okay. Any questions on 91 to 94? In 94, probability cannot be negative. A probability of 1 is possible, though. That's just 100%. All right, so we need to move on because those of us copying, if you want to copy the homework, you at least have to put in enough effort to go look at the YouTube video. All right, 
plan book. Because if we don't have questions, if we're just copying, I'm ready to move on. If you have questions, I'm happy to talk about questions. But I'm tired of playing this game where we just copy homework. Like, we got to break that habit. We got to do our homework. So tonight, we are doing 226, so we can ask questions about it tomorrow. Any questions about plan book? All right, pull out 226. Anyone looking to read for me? Of course, do Cheetah. Go ahead and read that giant paragraph right there. Sorry, I'm ahead of you. You're here. I am here to tell you. Hi. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. Decimals are not your friend. Now, sometimes they are. And a lot of times, especially when we're working with like one half or one fourth, um, a lot of times, kids especially, actually, I shouldn't even say that, adults do this totally as well. You immediately go, oh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, because money, right? We're so used to working with decimals for money. I am here to tell you decimals are often more complicated than fractions. So let's look at this. We got three fifths times six sevenths. I don't think this one's on your paper. The next one's on your paper. Yeah, 96 is on your paper. So this is on graph paper. Right, thank you, Katie, for showing. If you need a piece of graph paper, come grab one. We are on 226. You might have some graph paper in your binder, though, if you still have it from last week. I see some people moving papers around. We'll need your handout out. This one's just not on. We do not need calculators today because we don't need them. Guys, remember, I'm not anti-calculator. We just don't need them today. We would if we were using decimals. So go ahead and write down three fifths times six sevenths. And go ahead and chat with your team about how can we do that problem. Three fifths times six sevenths. What? Uh, multiplication of fractions. Yo, if you want to put something on your graph paper like a header, what is going on? Your header, and guys, you can always just grab a book, and the, the name of the lesson is like our header. We are doing fraction multiplication. Uh, multiplication feels like a really long word. Yeah, it kind of is. By the way, I'm not trying to be like a cool kid from the 90s, which you won't get that reference. I hurt my wrist. This is not some like style thing. I hurt my wrist, so I, I have a boo-boo today. Um, we, my brother is moving, and I'm older than I used to be. So if I convert these to decimals, it's 0.6 times 0.857142 repeating forever. 
Yeah, who wants to multiply those decimals together? Yeah, not me. Not me, especially without a calculator. Even with a calculator. Yeah, what, like, how do I type a repeating decimal into a calculator? You can't. You can't. You can't. But you can't, because you'll be there forever. Jo okay, fine. You just keep doing it. I'm going to go eat some pizza. So, everything is about pizza, Antonella. You just don't know it yet. The world lies. It's all about pizza. And the cake is a lie. All right, so hold on. Audrey, right, when Audrey turned to her group, we actually don't even have anyone named Audrey in here, she said, you know, this is really... She called this easy. Well, now I said it. But she called this easy. And Audrey said, I multiplied 3 times 7 and got 5. Or, I multiplied 5 times 7 and got 35. I multiplied 3 times 6 and got 18. And my answer is just 18 and 35. Yeah. That is how... That's how easy fraction multiplication is. Stop saying it. All, guys, I would draw these arrows on your paper. All we do is 3 times 6 to get the numerator of 18. And we do 5 times 7 going across the bottom to get the denominator of 35. And that's it. We're done. Try that on 96 on your worksheet. Excuse me, try that skill on your worksheet. Multiply those fraction times fraction. Double check your answers with your teammate. Yeah, that would be gross, right? You didn't have to write that down, but that would be horrible. You would never want to do that Right there. Oh yeah, if you need your multiplication table, that's a good reference right now. We're going to do random cards to talk about this. If you want to, you do not have to. If we have our multiplication table, yeah, 13 times that, that one might be tough. It, I just think you're living boldly. Dangerous way to live. Let's double check they're all on the same page. Marina, what is the answer for A here? Where's Marina at? Ah, I see Miss Martin's in her way. You're all good. Thirty-five over I'm not even sure what eight times six is. Forty ah, forty-eight. 35 over 48, making sure we're all on the same page. Multiply it across the top, multiply it across the bottom. Double check the right 
So you're a seven squared? Yeah. All right, well, I mean, seven's a lucky number, so seven squared must be lucky. There you go, seven squared. You're lucky. Kylie in B. Can you tell me what we get there? Eight sixty fifths. Eight sixty fifths in B. Layla, what about C? Thirty six over forty nine. Dikshita, what about D? Twelve over fifty six. Any questions at this point? Let's go class answer then. What is E? Six over twenty two. We could reduce that to three over eleven if you would like. And we know that will repeat because it's got an 11 on the bottom. And class, what's our final answer here? 72 over 42. Yeah, 14 is a fun one to multiply with. 72 over 42. Any questions? We go top to top, bottom to bottom. All right, so when I highlighted in the, uh, the beginning paragraph, simple fraction. Guys, simple does not mean what you think it means. Simple does not mean easy. Right? Simple does not mean not hard. Simple is a math word meaning a number in top, a number in bottom, that's it. And proper. Right? So a simple fraction really just means proper fraction. Doesn't mean easy. So a not simple fraction also doesn't mean hard. So as we move forward, we're going to have not just fractions, but numbers and fractions, which are mixed numbers, right? What's up? We only ever common denominator in addition and subtraction. However, if you use common denominator, you just still go straight through the top and straight through the bottom. So a fun problem I like to use is like, a half times a half times a half. Like, what's a half of a half of a half? And you can keep going, right? And so, actually, there's this math thing. If you want, like, a Mr. Estes type idea, if every trip I take is halfway to the door, will I ever get to the door? No, I'll never. If every trip I take is halfway to... I'm this far from the door, right? I go halfway to the door. I go halfway to the door. I go halfway to the door. I'm never going to get there. If I'm only ever going half of what's left, I never get there. But like half of a half of a half, still, multiply straight through the top. What's one times one times one? One. One. And straight through the bottom. What's two times two times two? Eight. Careful, don't add them. Multiply them. So even if they had common denominators, we just still straight through the top, gets the top, straight through the bottom, gets the bottom. Does that make sense? Other questions? Please ask them. You asking questions makes me a better teacher. So when we have mixed numbers, there are a few ways that we can do this. So Rhoda and I are friends because she's a gardener. I love gardening. I gotta cut all my plants down because it's getting it's getting it's getting cold, right? Things are starting to die. But Rhoda's planting out a small flower bed for next year. It's gonna be three and a half feet by one and a half feet. I want you guys to find the area of it. And you've got this on your paper, don't you? Yep, this is on your paper. Some of you already did it. So the, the method we used last week with the, the rectangles, go ahead and try that here. How big is this flower bed? Probably 
Additions, but what we're doing is multiplication. So help me out. What is a half times one? Oh, oh yeah, that's I'm silly. One half. What's a half times three? One and a half. What's a half times a half? So sometimes I intentionally write things up here wrong to see who's paying attention, right? Like who's actually watching? Who's actually thinking about what's going on? So Aiden's getting a piece of candy because he's paying attention today. Antonella? So three times one is three. One times a half is a half. Three times a half is one and a half. And a half of a half is a fourth. So now we would go three plus one and a half plus a half plus a half. Who what? I'm just kind of annoyed. This feels, this feels long. Like, doesn't... Yeah, see, it's... No, to, whoever said decimals, just don't put put that thought away. Put it in a box. Lock that box. I got on your on your paper. I don't care if it's graph paper or the worksheet. Write down three and a half times one and a half. So whoever said decimals, and don't write this down because this would be three point five times one point five, and I don't know if that's any easier. I don't know what thirty five times fifteen is. If I stack these. Right, don't write this down. Like, you don't need to. I'm telling you, you that don't need to. So, like, this wouldn't be that hard, but I don't want it to be hard at all. What? Hold on. My back hurts. I'm getting old. Okay, so simple fractions. They said we're just like a number and a number, like numerator, denominator, and the nicest ones are proper. But could I make this these mixed numbers into just fractions? What sort of fractions can I turn these mixed numbers into? Oh, Kylie? Uh, the, the one yeah, I'm just writing what you just told me to do. Make! Your fractions improper. Trust me. So, 3 times 2 is what? Plus 1. So we get 7 over 2 times 1 times 2. Oh, yeah. You're right, Kylie. We can make this 3 halves. Yeah, 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1 gets the 3 halves. What's... 7 times 3? 21. 2 times 2? I'm done. That's it. 
Nope, I don't have to. Unless the problem specifically says turn it back into a mixed number, I can leave my fraction improper. It's fine. If I'm asked to turn this back in to a mixed number, let's review this because some of us haven't done this in a while. To turn this into a mixed number, how many fours fit into 20? Five. And what would we have left over? Five and one four. Five and one four. So guys, we can use that rectangle method. It works totally fine. Totally fine. But it feels unnecessary. Right? It, it's like, it's a lot of work when I could just make things improper. Questions? Try this. One and a half feet by five and a third feet are our dimensions. That means like length and width, right? Dimensions means like length and width. This is not on your worksheet, so this is just on graph paper. One and a half by five and a third. What does five mean? Five is like dimensions. So when it says one and a half by five and a third, it's telling you like a length by a width. It's just like, I don't know why we use the word by. Do you know why we use the word by, Mr. Mr. Flynn? Like for dimensions, like length by width. We're just trying to figure that out and I don't know. Yeah, it's that's a good question. Yeah, like of what actually works. A lot of times we multiply these. Yeah, like of, like one and a half of five and a third. I think of actually would make more sense. So make these improper, right? We said it's easier if they're improper. Then go ahead and multiply them. Second. 48 over 6, but hold on. 
What if I told you I don't need to multiply 3 times 16? Write this down again. Write this down again. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Three halves. Three halves times sixteen thirds. Question. Ponder this with me for a second. Hold on. This is really, really tough. What is... Talk with your team. What is this? You guys are really good at math. Holy cow. So wait. So wait. Wait, wait, wait. So wait. What is... What is... So what is Hold on, hold on. You're gonna call this the wrong thing. And not all of you, but a lot of you. This hold on. Yo, stop talking, please. We and you should write this down. We can cross reduce. Reduce. Not cross. Multiply. Not cross. Like cross reduce. We're trying to make our numbers smaller. Easier. When you have a number in the numerator and the same number in the denominator, what's 3 over 3? One. One. You guys just told me that. So a three on top and a three on bottom can actually wipe each other out and they become ones because a three on top and a three on bottom is one. So this is really, hold on, stick with me. I'm going to keep blowing your mind. This is really, I can rewrite it as one half times 16 over one. Hold on though. There's more. I'm making this easy. If you look at the 16 and you look at the 2, what could they both be divided by? 2. So if we divide by 2, this becomes a 1 and this becomes an 8. And our problem is really, well, 1 over 1, no, it's just 1 times 8 over 1. This is 8. Now, hold up. Everything I wrote in red and green does not have to be done. None of it has to be done. It's just options to make the math easier. But if this is not easier for you, you do not have to do that. What's in purple is what's important that we can multiply through. We got right up here, same thing. This is eight. You're fine to just do this. This is totally fine. But if you want to turn on your brain and try to make the problem a little bit easier to work, we can cross reduce things. Now, hold on a second. Have you ever heard the phrase, you can't mix apples and oranges? Yes, actually, I have. So, the kind of means, like, you know, you can't, like, put an apple and an orange together and, like, talk about them together because you'd have, like, apple oranges. But have you ever eaten fruit salad? So, fruit salad often has apples and oranges, right? So, I'm ahead of myself. I'm one from ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's look for a mistake. Janique did two and a half times three and a quarter. Janique, here, come, come, like, put your pencil down for a second. We don't need to write. Let's just see what Janique did. Does two and a half 
become five halves? Yeah. What's three times four? Twelve plus one more. So thirteen over four. Five times three, sixty-five. Two times four, eight. So I think I think Janique's good, right? Any mistakes here? Try our new skill of making them improper on these three problems. I'm going to write them out again underneath here. Three and a half. Uh, I'm about to write that wrong. This is not on your worksheet, I apologize. At least I don't think so. Making them improper and then multiplying straight through. This one is probably 99. Yeah. So if you want to write them, really, the question numbers don't matter all that much. You could just like squiggly line the thing in the problem. And it probably would be the same number. If I was in your seat and I was writing this whole thing, make it improper. Then multiply. So whoever wants to help me, what's three and a half as an improper? Seven halves, right? You do three times two, and then plus the one. Why you gotta be so smart, man? Fine, Aiden, help me with the next one. What's one and a third as an improper? Um, I think what's the I'm sorry. Forgive me. Two and a half as an improper? One and a third as an improper? Three and a third as an improper? And three. All right. Well, let's go class answer on these things. Our first one here. What's the blue one become? Yeah, 21 over 4. Very good. We can just leave it. We can just leave whatever. We can leave it like that. We don't really care that much. What's our green one become? 20 over 6. We could definitely reduce that, but we don't have to. We're just practicing getting to the start. And our final one here in purple. 40 over 9. You may use the next three minutes to get a head start on your homework, which you're already staring at. It is right in front of you. Work with your teammates to work on your homework. Get a head start on your homework. Head start on your homework. Reasonable function. I do not have any of the little things. 
I do have tape over there in the, by the hole puncher. Yep, I just tape them and re hole punch them. We should be starting our hole punch. Multiplying those fractions where it says this is your practice work, you just passed it. Right there. I would do 101 together right now. I would do 101 together right now. Okay, I updated it again this morning because you emailed me. Did you check math this morning? Dang, what the heck? Because I have your paper to give you back. I'm going to check it again. Maybe we need Mr. Estes to fix this issue. Alright guys, it is time to pack it up. I'm sorry, I know you just want to stay here and do math all day. All right, Farah, come here. All right, I want you to, I just logged in. Check, check, mastery, mastery. So on my end, everything for you looks good. If it is not like that, the next time you log in, come see me and we might need to see Mr. Ashley. Okay, so you look good on my side. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know, go check math. No, I'll look it up. Looks like it. What is it?